G'day, I'm Clive and welcome to part two of my hiking and camping gear storage. The last few days I've been sat, I haven't really done much. All I've done is I've put this power outlet actual box in there ready for the plugs to go on it. All I need to do is seal around it just so it makes it a little bit more secure and it also blocks any sound coming from this wall behind but I will be soundproofing that with paneling as well as soundproof but I've made a few decisions of what I want to do next is where these cables are when I put the shelf on here it's going to be sitting on the cables so imagine this is it I just want to put a groove in so the actual cable sits in the frame and then just pin the loose up on the inside. So that's what I want to get done included in this video today. That one I'm going to have to drill a hole all the way through into the back and the same with this one here I'm going to have to drill a hole all the way through so I can connect them from behind and that means the lighting will be connected from this point to here so when I've got the actual power inverter actually delivered and installed the lights will all work fingers crossed <clears throat> on the back of this board I want to put soundproofing so I want to put the actual soundproofing itself which I've got up here and I want to uh, use tongue and groove I think about to close the back in here because when I bring in the power up, I want it to be up here and into the box that way. So I may as well just put tongue and groove all the way up instead of trying to build a box in there. Now I've just found a piece of scrap wood which will go behind this. And I'm going to have to use one, two, three screws. So when I do the tongue and groove, I've got something to attach it to behind. There's a small little worktop here, a little surface inside made out of this stuff, the offcuts. I need to take that out so I can run the conduit up and in. And that also means down the bottom here, I'm going to install some conduit, run the cable through, run it through the, uh, below this here, which will be about this height, but right at the back out of the way, in there and up. So there's going to be a bit of drilling holes, a uh, couple of screws to hold the conduit in place. Now I'm not wiring directly into the mains. Now I am qualified to do the plug top replacements which means I can go in and replace the uh, power point, uh, not the power points, the sockets on extension cords uh, or on a machine for example if the plug's been damaged I can chop the old one off and I can install the new ones. So what I'm doing is technically it's going to be like an extension cord. I've got the double power point in the wall down at the bottom so all I'm going to do is put a plug on the one end of the cord and that's going to be able to plug in there, run the other rest of the cord through the conduit and into the back of the power point which technically is just giving me a double end on the extension cord. So there's no need for me to get any tags or anything like that. <clears throat> but if you've never done anything like that before, get someone else to do it. And if you're doing it this way, with an ex uh, technically making an extension cord, and you don't do it yourself and you get somebody in, it's going to be cheaper than paying an electrician to come in and do it. Because a lot of people who are qualified to do the t tagging and testing and the plug top replacements aren't qualified electricians, they're only trained to do that specific part of, that, uh, of it. So it's a way to save money if you need to. And if you're capable of doing it yourself, go for it. So what have I got to do today then? I've got to clear that out. I've got to nip to Bunnings up the road, get a new double socket to go in there, get a couple of uh, clips for the conduit to clip into to keep it secure
and then I'll see about installing the shelves here and the top shelf which will run all the way across and the reason why I want to get this side done first is because on that side there's a lot of stuff stored which is meant to go in here the smaller stuff not as long and underneath that stuff is I've just got tongue and groove at the moment using it as a shelf which I'll be using to do the back of this and in the inside of this cupboard here all the way down and same as both ends of over here when I get to it so let's make a start get my packs out of the way measure everything up see what I need and then head up to the Bunnings shelves emptied or where the shelves are going the backpacks have all been taken out of there so I'm gonna get this all measured up get the wood cut and then put the grooves in here and then place the shelves in place Seven six five. Yeah, one seven six five. Trim the back one. It's going to be easier. So if you make a mess of it, don't mind about the join not being perfect. Right, trim that one down. Let's get it in and have a look. before I actually fix them in place I'm doing grooves for the wiring they can see on the camera but that wire let's bring it a bit closer so you can see yeah, this wire comes up here and it passes over this support 
So I'll just get the saw, give it a few brushes over and see how it fits. Couldn't find my other saw, so I'll give it a go with this. And I might be better if I undo that so I don't chop it. Out the way. Right, let's go with a V shape, shall we? The old chisel on it. Take the last of it out. <sighs> a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper needed, a little bit deeper. Come on. Sharpies of chisels. That'll do that one. And now uh, let's get this one done. Straight to the chisel. Test this one. Needs a bit further. Perfect. This will be the best one. Get it flat, uh, square so you don't cross thread. If you're awkward, these things. That's it. There it goes. Got it. Let's do that one up. These are outdoor lights. We've got the rubber ring in there to seal. Uh, I don't think we're going to get any rain in here. Let's hope not. Let's hold it up. 
go that way, or we're gonna go that way. That way. Right. Move that. Move that. I do have to drill. I do have to drill down this end of hole for this one to pass through and join up with that one. But at least now I can get some stuff on here and clear the shelf there so I can get to the tongue and groove to use in there. Uh, nice. I don't know if you can see on the camera the actual look of the wood. I'll zoom in with it. It's just nothing fancy, quite rustic, and just suits the job that needs to be done. I've been using this thinking this is 19mm, it's not only 17mm. Uh, let's get a cable back in the groove again. That's it. So now I could just put maybe three screws on this side, three on that side, and that'll do it. That's going nowhere. Done. Well, what I might do is go and get some of the gear out of that, transfer it onto this. Now this bit's done, and then I can get some of the materials from there, the tongue and groove. So I'm going to start in there. And that's that shelf up. I've thrown some gear up. So we've opened that shelf up so I can get to the tongue and groove. But I've just noticed that the length of the video, but after I've done the editing, it'll probably be about 18, 19 minutes long. So I'm going to call it a day here on this video. And the wife's just got home, so probably better that I be a little bit quieter. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have give me a thumbs up the like button. If you're not a subscriber please go down below and click the subscribe button, the notification bell next to it and select all so you can be notified of all future videos and if you are already a subscriber again I thank you very much.